Oh boy. Day 23. I thought it would be smooth sailing by now, but actually, today is hard. I guess some of today's stuff isn't that hard. You know how sometimes bed sheets and pillowcases come in little bags that you're probably supposed to throw away because there's no way you're ever going to be able to fold them back up into that tight little shape ever again? Um, but those bags seem like they would be really good to store something in. They're not really good for anything. Let it go. Also, I found this one slipper sock booty thing that I used to love, but first of all, I can't find the other one, and second of all, I now have other winter home footwear that I prefer to wear. So as cozy as these were, now they're like third in line to the throne. And since I spend most of my time in San Francisco, third in line to the throne is like Prince Harry, who will never be king. You're gonna laugh for this next one. It's so hard for me to let go of these shirts. I don't hand wash them, so the designs don't last forever. They start to crack. You can't really see the cracks from a distance, but you can see them if you look close. And I do work in close proximity to people. I don't want to wear cracked shirts at work. I'm already pushing it to wear tuxedo t-shirts in the first place. And they don't make good lounge shirts because the last thing I want to wear on my days off are shirts that I consider to be work shirts. Also, I'll show you a secret place in my closet. Yep, there it is. It's the ready and waiting stash of spine t-shirts that I pull from when one of my regulars gets faded or cracked. It's just hard to let go because it's not in tatters. Well, I'm letting it go. Actually, I'm letting go of two of them. Also, I'm letting go of these perfectly good black sweatpants. They seemed fine until my friend Yabet gave me a pair of incredible black sweats that she made from hemp. Wow, they are so comfortable. I'm wearing them right now. Once I got Yabet's hemp sweats, I never wore these other ones again. I kept them because I thought maybe I could use a backup. A backup for what? When these awesome hemp pants wear out, am I going to run to the inferior sweats? No way, I'm going to call Yabet and order another pair from her. I'm also getting rid of these bad, cheap paintbrushes. I think I bought them when I was making Christmas ornaments a few years ago. Paintbrushes are expensive, so I jumped at the chance to buy this super cheap set of assorted paintbrushes. This might be an awesome set if I were five years old and didn't know any better, but turns out cheap paintbrushes are terrible. They are so bad that I dragged my ass back to the store and shelled out the money for a couple of good paintbrushes to get the job done. Unless you're buying supplies for little kids, don't waste your time or money with garbage art supplies. They just become sad trash. Okay, and it's big bag of stuff makes a huge visual difference for me in one of my storage areas. They say if you haven't used something in a year, then you can get rid of it. Well, I haven't needed anything from this bag in the almost three years that I've been in this apartment. Here are two ancient power strips. Power strips seem useful, but ancient ones are not. Most home fires these days are electrical fires, and using old electrical equipment is one risk factor. I have a few power strips in use at home, but they are all pretty new. Why? Because I didn't trust these old ones. So why am I saving them? I need to let them go. Same with this old, thin extension cord. Something this thin is only good for something with very low amperage, like a string of Christmas lights. But seeing as this cord has been untouched in a bag for at least three Christmases, it's not even being used for that, and I don't foresee needing it in the future. It's a potential hazard, if anything, so I'm gonna let it go. And here are two power cables from an old um, desktop computer or maybe an old monitor or something. All of the computers in the house and at the office are working and not missing a power cord, so I don't know why I have these two. I guess for a spare, but um, many things go wrong with computers the power cord is generally not one of them. I don't need spare power cords. 
And here is another, I don't know, 30 feet or so of Cat5 cable. Yep, we got rid of a bunch of Cat5 cable in another video, but I found another one. Here's another extension cord, and this one is um, less flimsy than the other one. So on the one hand, it's like, well, it's less flimsy than the other one. Maybe I can use this one and should hang on to it. But there's no reason to hang on to it. Most homes these days have lots of wall outlets because these days people use a bunch of electrical stuff so we don't need as many extension cords and extension cords are generally just asking for trouble anyway so not using it don't even want the temptation to use it haven't used it in over three years i can let it go here's a little um credit card swipey swiper with a USB connection at the off from from the office, I guess. So seems like it would be useful to have because I do accept credit cards still. But the thing is, I don't ever swipe them into the the desktop computer at the office or anything with a USB connection because these days it's all chip cards and contactless touch tap stuff or cards on file or whatever and in the rare case that i do ever have to swipe a card i have a little swiper about this big i can let go of this and here's another quirky source of things to declutter it's actually from an old old chiropractor's office and it used to hold the little lead numbers and letters from um that that used to be used for marking old x-ray films so um i got rid of the old letters and numbers and i thought this would be perfect to hold jewelry and little rocks and stuff like that and on the one hand it is perfect for that on the other hand the problem is with like a wooden box like this you can't see what's in it, so you don't know what's in it, so it's really easy to forget about what's in it. So everything in here is very forgettable, and I probably haven't opened this box since moving into this apartment about three years ago. I can probably let go of everything in this box, which pains me. On the one hand, it pains me. On the other hand, I haven't even looked at it in three years, so how important could it be? It's almost not even worth telling you what's in here because I should just pitch everything. But for the purpose of commiserating, what have we got here? We've got a bunch of random little crystals. I really like crystals. They're super cool, but am I enjoying them if they're just trapped in a little box in the depths of my closet? Nope. I think this is a Herkimer diamond. It's just so beautiful and cool. And couldn't I do something with this one day? Maybe I could learn to make a little piece of jewelry or something. No, that's not going to happen. So I need to either pitch it, which is hard, or give it to some friend who does make cool jewelry or art or something, or glue it to a seashell for a Christmas ornament. Something, I have to do something with it other than leave it trapped in this little box in the depths of my closet. So lots of little rocks in this box. Um, I also have tons of little teeny tiny glass animals, most of which are broken somehow. This is a little glass boar with broken front legs, but I keep it because look at that adorable little curly tail. It's so cute and so delicate. How could I throw it away? Look at that face. It's not that cute of a face, but it's anything small is cute. Tons of these little tiny glass animals from the horde of Aunt Dee, who passed away some years ago. And I keep them because they remind me of um, that book, The Glass Menagerie, because it's literally a glass menagerie. This is, this is what that is. But a lot of them are broken. I'm not displaying them anywhere. That means I'm not enjoying them. They're not conversation pieces for anyone. If I die and someone digs out this box, if you sniff them, they all smell like x-ray chemicals now. What would anyone do with these? So I think that little tiny glass animals probably belong in a little glass animal museum somewhere. And I'm sure that museums that care about this kind of stuff have them on display already. And the ones in the museum are probably not broken and I'm sure they're in great condition. So I can let go of these. I can also let go of stuff like this cute 
skeleton pin because the truth is number one i don't wear pins that's why it's stuffed in this box in my closet second of all just because i'm a chiropractor doesn't mean i have to pick up and own and keep every adorable skeleton that comes my way so as adorable as this thing is I'm gonna let it go same with this little slice of rock it's really cool. It's either called watermelon quartz or watermelon agate. It's just beautiful. And I don't even remember where I got it. I think someone gave it to me as a freebie because I ordered something else. What the hell do you do with a slice of rock? Somebody can do something with it, but not me. Also this cute pin. It says, attitude is everything. Someone I really like gave me this, but again, I don't wear pins, so I never wear it. So it's in this box. It needs to go. And this random large bead, also from the horde of Aunt D, who was like the bead lady. What am I gonna do with this random large bead? Nothing. And a random tiny vial of sweet perfume that I never wear because I don't wear sweet perfume. I generally don't wear fragrances at all because so many people are sensitive to fragrances, including myself. Plus, things like this don't last forever. If you open them after years, they don't smell like they did when you first got them. Here's a little fossil necklace that I used to wear all the time. I don't wear it anymore, so I should let it go. It's hard to let go because I'm like, but it's a fossil. It's so old and amazing, and it made it this far, and how can I let it go? Well, guess what? These fossils are incredibly not rare. It's okay to let it go, and if I pitch it back into the dirt, Guess what? That's where it started in the first place. It'll be home again. It's okay to let go of the fossil. Here is, I think this is the old cross that I was given when I was baptized into the Russian Orthodox Church a long time ago. And I'm not sure why I keep it. It makes me a little bit sad. I think I used to keep it because I thought if I ever wanted to visit a Russian Orthodox church, maybe I would wear this and then they would think I was still Orthodox so I could kind of slide under the radar and they wouldn't give me shit. But um, I'm not going to wear this just so I can sneak into a Russian Orthodox church and pretend that I'm still one of them. That's, that's a little weird. And then here's like a miraculous medal. Pretty sure my mom sent me this because she's always sending me these medals. And then she asks me if I'm wearing them and I always have to say no because I don't want to lie. But then I feel bad. And then she sends me another one because she thinks maybe I lost it. That's why I'm not wearing it. Um, I don't lose them. I just don't wear them. So Mary has to find a new home too. And a really nice little chain to wear either of those religious things, which I never wear. So I don't need the chain or I need to move the chain to somewhere where it will hold something that I do wear. But the truth is, I don't really wear necklaces frequently. I don't wear any jewelry all the time. So probably just declutter this whole entire box. And here's another cute little bag that I found. I have the hardest time decluttering cute things with faces. Look at this face. It's a little panda bag. I got it from um, a trip to the National Zoo. I bought a bunch of stuff at the gift shop and they, I don't, I don't even know what was going on, but they had some little thing help the zoo. Your donation helps us, la di da di da And then you get the little, do you want the cute little panda bag? And I was like, of course I want the cute little panda bag. Look at that face. But I never use this bag. It just sits under my desk, folded up, waiting for an assignment. I keep thinking, um, I'll send it to the next cute kid who I have to send something to. I do a lot of mailing. I don't mail a lot of things to kids. So this panda bag needs to go.